So, you're getting the hang of Illustrator, you've learned how to do a few simple shapes, maybe a little bit into the pen tool, you're feeling more confident in the tool, but now you realize the more you know, the more you know you don't know. I'm here to help. So we're gonna be looking at one of the, probably the most niftiest tools within Illustrator and one I use all the time called the clipping mask. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, my name is Martine and I'm a designer and illustrator and make these YouTube videos from time to time, which I hope you find useful. So as I said, we're gonna be looking at the clipping mask today and think of the clipping mask as a sort of inverted stencil where you can effectively mask images and graphics within a set shape. Sound good? Maybe not. Maybe I've just confused you more. So let's have a look at a few of these methods in practice and you'll start seeing the potential for the tool. Let's go. So before we get into the tutorial itself, it bears mentioning that Pexels is an awesome website. This is no ad or affiliation with them, but it's a site that I've been using to get really good textures and, and imagery and stock photos for years now. And just make sure that whenever you download an image from the site that you check that if it needs attribution or the kind of license that surrounds it, even though it's free to download, make sure you are following the rules as well. But it's a great resource and all the images that I'm using in this tutorial have come from Pexels. That's my kitty cat's paw, by the way. So we've got a fresh Illustrator document, 1920 by 1080p, whatever you prefer to work in, depending on the output. And I've imported a image from Pexels. So now I'll take you through how to do a clipping mask. So the first example, we're going to be looking at text clipping masks. So without further ado, let's get our text tool. And I'm just gonna create some text over here. Just make it bigger so you can see it. And there we go. Now, the important thing to note is when you're working, so the text is ultimately going to be our mask. And when you're working with text, we want to make sure that we right click and create outlines. That means that Illustrator is now reading this text as shapes as opposed to text. Now, another thing we have to remember is that these, even though they're grouped, they're all separate shapes. So that's gonna affect how we do our mask. So keep that in mind. So essentially what I want to do is I wanna place the shape or the text over the image that I wanna mask from. So it should be on the top. If it's not, if you created your text first and then brought in the image, just make sure that you right click on your image and go to arrange center back. So your text or your mask is in front. So now that I have my text, I've got my image. I just wanna drag a bounding box over both. So they're both selected. And if we go right click, make clipping mask, nothing's happened. And there's a reason for that. So as I mentioned, these, even though they're grouped, they're all separate shapes. So we want to tell Illustrator to treat this text as one shape. Otherwise, our clipping mask will not work. So once we've outlined the text, we're going to click on it. We're going to go to Object, Compound Path, Make. So make sure that whenever you're working with separate paths, but you want Illustrator to treat them as one single shape, convert it to a compound path. So. The text is still there, but the opacity is down. So I'll just make it black again, just so we can see what we're doing. So now when I select both and I right click, make clipping mask, boom. It's that easy guys. There's nothing else to it. And what's really, really cool is the fact that this is a live effect. So this is not the final. If I don't like the imagery and the way it's showing and I go to my direct selection tool, I can directly click the image behind the mask and I can drag it 
so it shows the best possible shapes within my mask. Another way to do it is if I use my normal selection tool and double click, double click again, I can now see my image within the mask and I can move it around like this and then click back up here to revert to my normal view. That is it. That is clipping masks. So now that I've shown you how to work with just simple text and an image, let's take you through actually working with an existing illustration you've already created and masking that. Let's go. So you guys may recognize this as one of my illustrations and I've already prepared the text on top and I have my illustration. One thing I do want to do is just change the color of my layer Okay, so if I zoom in, this is still a text layer. I haven't yet outlined the text. So we've created our text. We have our image that we want to mask behind the text. So once I've got my text selected, make sure I right click, create outlines. And then remember while it's still selected, go into object, compound path, make. Okay. We'll just make that black again. So make sure that whatever illustration you're using, whatever design you're using to mask, make sure it's grouped. So this illustration, as you can see, if I click on it, it's all one group. It doesn't need to be a compound path, but it does need to be grouped. Okay, so let's drag out and select everything on the screen. Our text is in front, which is what we want. Right click, make clipping mask, done. So this is when we can start getting a little bit more creative. So I want to play along this waves theme a little bit more. And I like this arch over here. So I'm going to use that. So if I double click, remember this is a live effect. So we can always double click into it and we can mess around with the illustration itself. So these are the two lines that I want to bring into my composition. So I'm going to just make sure I know which lines they are. So I'll go into my direct selection tool and I just want to select these two shapes. And I want to control C to copy, click back up here to go to my normal view. And those are being copied to my clipboard and I want to control shift V to paste in place. If not, you can go to edit, paste in place. And there we have it, something. So we're working within a clipping mask, but we're giving it a little bit of something extra as well that plays on this theme of waves. And I think that looks pretty cool. There's a bit of cleaning up to do. So already I'm hoping you can start to see the potential of what you can do with clipping masks. So those are just two examples of how to use the clipping mask with text. But obviously text when it's outlined is just a shape. So when you bring shapes into the equation, like so, using the exact same methods, you can turn this into this. And there you have it, a nice, simple, simple method. Go out there and see what you can create with it. I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. If you have, I'd really appreciate it if you could like the video, share it, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time where we have a look at the blend tool. All right, you guys take care.